Got him. Got him. He come up and boiled under that, Jay, and just sort of laid there, and I just shook it, and he got it. Nice one, too. Yeah, nice boy. I mean, they are, I cannot believe the way they're eating that. I hesitated. I counted one, two, three, earn hurt on that one. Look at that. That frog is gone. I mean, it is gone city. Look at that. Nice I mean, baby. Ah, one thing about a 50-pound Grand Slam braid, you don't have to worry about breaking it. Look at that. Every one of them I've caught has got it down deep like that. Every single one has had it the exact same way. They are not. They are not hesitating eating that. Let me tell you what I do with a, with a popping frog, and uh, I advise anybody do this. Now it's going to make it a little bit, going to make it not nearly as weedless. You don't always want to squeeze all the the water out of them. Oh, you got him. Had a hit, didn't you? I sure did. But here, here's what you want to do. If you'll notice, let me get this baby straightened back out. Getting ready to fish. If you'll notice, you see how high these hooks are. are you take it, you pull that. You see that catch, catches your finger every time. That's because I, I take my needle nose and I go right in here. And these hooks are strong. They're hard. So you got to get a real good grip on it when you bend it up. And I bend them up where the point. You see that point is going slightly upward. When they come out of the package, they're either straight or going down. I do the exact same thing with every spinnerbait I use. Now this is slightly upward. Now if that hits on a log and turns over, you can get hung up. But now on the bottom, you're still not going to have any problem. You can pull it over everything. But if it turns over, it'll hang up. But here's the other deal. Fish grabs a hold of it, he's hooked. I mean, he's hooked. So you, you, can't, you don't miss nearly as many fish. You don't lose nearly as many fish having, having those hooks been out.